The Islamic State in Iraq and Syria is celebrating its one-year anniversary today. On June 29, 2014, the group declared itself a caliphate with Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi as its leader. In the lead-up to this grim moment, ISIS carried out a horrific massacre in the Syrian border town of Kobani last Thursday. The Kurdish town saw 145 of its residents killed in what is likely to be the second worst massacre ever carried out by ISIS. There were many children, women and elderly among the killings, which were the results of at least two suicide bomb attacks. Meanwhile, three other incidents around the world are being attributed to ISIS. Late last week, in Tunisia, an armed attack on a beach resulted in at least 38 deaths, and at least half of those deaths were of British nationals. UK Prime Minister David Cameron has now promised a, quote, full-spectrum response to ISIS, calling it a poisonous death cult. In France, a U.S.-run chemical plant was attacked, with one person being beheaded and an unsuccessful attempt to blow up the entire plant. And in Kuwait, a mosque was attacked, with dozens killed. The U.S. and its allies launched 21 airstrikes aimed at ISIS over the weekend in Syria and Iraq. My guest is Reese Ehrlich. He's a veteran freelance foreign correspondent who's traveled widely across the Middle East and just and uh, has uh, written a number of books, and one of them being Conversations with Terrorists and Middle East Leaders on Politics, Violence, and Empire. And also, his book is uh, his latest book is called Inside Syria, The Backstory of the Civil War and What the World Can Expect. Welcome back to the show, Reese. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Kobani, just months ago, successfully repelled a takeover by ISIS. It was the center of Kurdish resistance, and the U.S. made much of this setback for ISIS. What does this new attack mean with these suicide bombings uh, last Thursday? I mean, how did it well, happen? How does ISIS have a foothold in this place once again? Well, it doesn't really have any uh, ability to reoccupy Kobani, but they were able to send in uh, suicide uh, bombers and truck bombers uh, disguised as uh, Peshmerga, disguised as Free Syrian Army, uh, and caused a great deal of damage. And it was a, certainly a, a setback. But I think it, looking at it in a wider context, the Kurdish and uh, Free Syrian Army forces were able to take a town right along the Kurdish uh, Syrian, uh, sorry, Kurdish Syrian and uh, Turkish border, and that was enabled uh, uh, the potential of cutting off uh, supply lines to uh, the ISIS forces not far away in Raqqa. So, <clears throat> this and seen in a wider context, they're striking back in an effort to uh, keep their uh, supply lines open uh, all the way into central Syria.